YouTube as it go in the go downs is back and there's still some really solid NFL free agents available I'm here with my top 10 best available going from 1 to 10 we'll list some teams I think could use these players sometimes they sign for cheap with a random team or a contender we'll see some of these guys should be coming off the board uh, sometime soon here but starting with number one former Broncos free safety Justin Simmons is my number one best available NFL free agent uh, I think he's still still available for two reasons, maybe. Maybe he's asking for a bit too much. I still think he's a really good, play, rangy, playmaking free safety, though. Uh, a lot of teams more and more these days running a split safety scheme. He's more of a single high guy, which is actually harder. So maybe a team's not willing to pay a whole lot for a 30-year-old safety if they don't know if he fits. But I think he's still a, a ball player here. And Titans have been linked to him. It's been a couple months, you know, earlier in the offseason they've been linked to him, but I can definitely see that. You can see the Texans, Saints, good fits there. You know, does he does he sign for dirt cheap and go to a contending team like the Chiefs or the Jets and the Texans would fall under that category? Eagles, we've we've linked Simmons to the Eagles before. They've added so many guys in the secondary, though, so maybe a little less likely right now. Number two, another defensive back, Xavier Howard. Man, I could have listed half the league with Xavier Howard. There's so many teams that still need a solid corner right now. And I, I you know, to me, he's been mainly a man coverage corner, but I think he could fit either man or zone. Uh, big time playmaker. The only concern with him is the durability. He's been cleared recently, but still a really solid corner. Almost listed him as my number one best available free agent, but. A lot of teams I want to list here, but I tried to limit it a little bit. But the Commanders definitely could use a starting corner uh, in Dan Quinn's defense. Uh, teams like the Colts, Bills, Bengals, Jags, Falcons are teams that we thought would come away with a starting corner in the draft. They did not, so they could still use one. And we put the Vikings on here because the Brian Flores connection, but heard some rumors about the Steelers. I don't know how much sense that would make. They value Dante Jackson and Deontay Johnson trade, and they have Joey Porter Jr. So if they signed Howard, it's like, okay, um, either they you know, they're, they don't love Dante Jackson as much, even though they did in that trade, or um, maybe they don't love Joey. They got to be playing the starting Joey Porter. So I don't, I don't know. Uh, the Buccaneers are another team uh, that would make a lot of sense as well because um, – I know they're more of a zone over man team, so we'll see. Maybe he ends up in a more of a man coverage team, but they traded Carlton Davis uh, a couple months ago during this offseason, so I could we could have listed the Bucks up here. I mean, there's a lot of teams, a lot of teams, but mainly looked at the teams that, yeah, we thought maybe they would add a starting corner in the draft. They did not, so it could be looking at Xavier and Howard. Uh, Tyler Boyd, maybe the best offensive free agent available. He's been... His name's come out very recently uh, because he's starting to take some visits. The Titans and the Chargers are two teams he's taken visits with, and people are kind of predicting, yeah, he's probably going to go to one of those teams. I've seen a lot of predictions of the Titans, and they they did hire Callahan, who was Boyd's offense coordinator of the Bengals, as their head coach. So there is that connection there, um, but we'll see. He's been linked to the Steelers in the past. He is a slot receiver. Uh, they did draft a big-time slot receiver in Roman Wilson, so that could kind of take them out of – the Boyd sweepstakes could, you know, the Titans brought in Zay Jones actually today for a visit. Could them, if they sign him, could that take him out of the Tyler Boyd sweepstakes? We'll see. I don't think the Chargers adding DJ Chark, I don't think changes anything because he's an outside receiver, Boyd, an inside guy. Uh, Cardinals could use him, pair him with Marvin Harrison Jr., some of the other rotational guys they have. Ravens uh, could use him, even though Zay Flowers plays a bit from the slot. Uh, definitely need receivers. I can definitely see the Saints pair him with Olave. Need a guy in the slot. Uh, the Broncos, yeah, they got outside receivers in Cortland Sutton uh, and Troy Franklin. Pretty good draft pick for them, so they could add Boyd in the slot. And the Jets, but maybe drafting Malachi Corley has taken them out of um, the running for Boyd. Maybe. Well, we will see. So, yeah, we. Ha I mean, we have to talk about the Titans and Chargers because they – brought him in for a visit so but so some other teams that make some sense like after those teams I kind of like the Saints and the Broncos I mean the Cardinals and the Ravens really should be in on him but how much will they be I really like the Saints and the Broncos there we will see but that is your best offensive uh best available offensive free agent in my opinion number four another safety Micah Hyde who's a free safety but he's very familiar with the split uh split safety schemes being in that cover two Buffalo Bills defense for so long uh definitely could see him with the Texans uh the Saints the Jets I mean uh, ran, I mean these are scheme fits all of them are pretty all of them are pretty much scheme fits they're all probably planning on running some split safety looks um I don't know if I like one more than the other really I think the Titans may be more likely for Justin Simmons 
but yeah, I, you know, I could see him signing pretty cheap to go to a contender. Uh, you know, Poyer signed cheap to go with the Dolphins. I think Hyde's looking for a bit more than him. A um, little bit more of a playmaker, but got to stay healthy, but a big time uh, leader as well. You know, talented player, but a leader. Uh, number five, another defensive back, Dory Jackson, who he had a rough year this year. Was it completely brutal? I'm not going to say that. But two years ago, when the Giants made the playoffs, I thought this was – he played like one of the better corners in football in man coverage nonstop. That is difficult to do. So I think there's still something in there. He's still very athletic. He can play man, which is difficult. Look at the commanders. Dan Quinn's going to run want to run a lot of man coverage, so, and they're going to need another corner. Colts run more cover three, but, you know, Gus Bradley does use a little bit of man coverage in there. They just need a corner pretty bad. You can see the Jags bringing him in to kind of battle with Ronald Darby for that other that, that one starting spot opposite Tyson Campbell. Um, and some other teams I can see, the teams that probably run a bit of man coverage. But, yeah, I really like the Commanders as a fit. It's just going to be, uh, you know, how teams view him. Do they view him as like what last year? That's kind of what we're going to get going forward with him. Or maybe he still got it in, you know, in the tank, you know, what, what he showed us two years ago where, where he was phenomenal. I thought so um, me put him in the top five. I'm thinking he still has a little bit of that in him. It was just 2022 season. Uh, number six, Emmanuel Ugba defensive lineman from the dolphins. He's played off the edge and he's played, you know, three technique inside can line up over the tackle. Um, I like the Bears. I think the Bears would be able to get a, get a lot out of him uh, in both spots. You know, three technique and defensive end. The Vikings with Brian Flores there, but they've added some pieces in, in that uh, category, so maybe less likely. And the Bengals, if Trey Hendrickson ends up being traded, be a team to watch. Commanders could use another piece uh, on that D line, perhaps. They've added a little bit. The Bucks can definitely see that. Um, you know, and they would move him around a bit as well. Lions, same thing. Uh, and the Titans could could use another defensive line, maybe like a Danico Autry replacement if the Titans were to get him. But um, yeah, I really the ba- the Bears make the most sense. Like who would get the most out of him right now? I, the Bucks probably right there as well. Um, we know the the chemistry fit with Flores, but they've added a little bit. I think if the Bengals traded Hendrickson, I, I'd really watch out for them, um, even though they are they are slightly different of players. Uh, number seven, I'm going to go Dalton Reisner, the Vikings guard from last year. When they signed him, I thought he looked very solid. I mean, a PFF, I guess, with their grade would disagree, but uh, I thought he I thought he had a phenomenal uh, season once he got in Minnesota, and they definitely could use him back. The Dolphins could use a guard. There's been some talk about the Raiders before the draft. I mean, a little less likely now. The Commanders could use another starter. The Ravens definitely could use a guy at right guard. The Packers could, but they've added – Quite a few offense linemen that that are mainly tackles, but could play guard perhaps. So maybe they feel they have that figured out, and the Titans could use an upgrade there as well. But I look at going back to the Vikings. I look at the Dolphins. Ravens really stand out. Uh, I think he's still sitting around. He was sitting around last year, but when he signed with the Vikings, he made it clear he like really wanted to play for the Vikings for some reason. Um, like he really wanted to play there. So he's kind of waiting for them to call, come along. So my thinking right now is a leverage situation. I think he wants to be in Minnesota. He wants to be in that system, and they know that. Like so, like we don't have. They're going. We don't have to offer a lot, you know. So he's trying to get them to bump up that price, and they're like, "Hey, we're winning leverage right now." That's my thinking. It makes sense to me. Uh, but a pretty solid guard that is still available. Uh, number eight, Quandre Diggs, uh, yet another defensive back, another free safety, uh, and he can play. Early in his career, he was more single high, but recently been more of like a split safety playmaker in the back. And not the playmaker he used to be, but still very solid, a smart free safety. Definitely can see. I love the fits of the Texans and the Jets. I think those two teams, to me, stand out a bit more than the other ones for some reason. I, I definitely would watch out for them. Uh, could sign, see him signing for cheap with the Chiefs. You know, they may go big or go home with safety. You know, they may not need one. Um, they lost Mike Edwards, and that's not like a – he was pretty good for them last year, but it's not like a – gut punch type of loss but um so they could go bigger go home, or like not go add anybody at the position i could see that but and some of the other teams we have mentioned a little bit for for free safeties but another veteran guy that is um quality player still out there number nine another corner there's, there's just a million defensive backs on this video and that's just because that's who's the best available but stefan gilmore who is declining a little bit he's always been a man coverage corner and that's why the man coverage guys when they get older they start to fall off a little bit. All of, all of a sudden, it happens. Like, whoa. You know, and that's because 
you know, the older guys, it's a little tougher for them to chase around. That's what man coverage is. You're chasing guys around. It's a little tougher when you get older with these athletic receivers. Um, so they either have to transition to more of a zone corner or they fall off. I think Gilmore's smart enough. I think he's talented enough that he can play zone. But, man, when he was with the Patriots, I know the Colts were more of a zone team, but they actually ran more man coverage than they have when he was there. Uh, and the Cowboys, big man coverage team. But So we'll see where he ends up. But the Commanders need a corner. Dan Quinn is there. They run, they're going to run a ton of man. Uh, it's going to depend. Like, Is it a zone team that's going to pick him up? I think it's see either. Um, there's some other teams there that I listed some man coverage teams for the most part, not all of them. I know the Bills are more zone. But teams that want to run some man at least, and they could use another corner. And then another corner, number 10, Steven Nelson, who played very well. He's kind of had an up-and-down career. He played very well for the Texans last year. Could see him going back. They could feel that they're set. They add Lasseter, who could pro- possibly slide in the inside, up, or he could play outside. Um, they added Akuda, which, I mean, that's not like... And Henderson, these are... To me, these are quality rotation guys, but I could see Akuda working out being a starter for D'Amico Ryan. So they may, they may not think that they need a corner. Again, the Commanders, Colts, these are teams that need one. I think the Bengals need a one. They, they could be set with their starters... But a little bit of durability concerns there, and they have no depth. So they could definitely use someone like that. The Falcons, I think, could use someone to start opposite of A.J. Terrell. Um, the Bills, I-, I think, could use someone to start opposite of Rasul Doug- Douglas, but they could be you know, good at Benford and Elam, perhaps. Um, Steelers, I think, their view, I think they might think they're set in terms of their starters, but definitely could use some depth pretty badly. Um, so maybe they you know, add more of a depth guy, perhaps. But, um, yeah, so I got a lot of good DBs out there. The corner class was pretty good. Safety, there was no stars, but the class for the draft, it was pretty deep, I thought. Um, some really good guys on day two and three. So maybe teams were kind of waiting for that as well. And now they know, hey, we need – there's some teams that need corners, man. There's some uh, – again, there's always a long list of good corners, quality corners in the draft. There's just always a bunch. I mean, probably because there's two starters for every team. Uh, you know, so now that teams, there's a lot of teams that missed on some, I, I think they're going to be flying off the board here in, uh, in the mild part of NFL uh, free agency off season, you know, of the off season. So we'll see where these guys sign. There's always, they're tough to predict around this time. Cause there's always these guys that end up going like dirt cheap to some contender or a team they think is a contender. So ends up being a little random, but yeah, so that's, that's where I'm actually curious. Justin Simmons, best one where he's, he's going to go, but the corners like there's again teams that badly need them so we'll see but that'll do it for this one let me know your guys thoughts in the comments on where you think these guys could go or if there's any other free agents you want to talk about uh always talk with you guys on twitter as well check out check out our draft content on our channel had a lot of it covering the nfl draft i don't think we're done yet either Uh, but that's gonna do it thanks everyone for watching goodbye